Yo, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Um, I apologize for being AWOL for about a week, week and a half. Um, I was playing around with some stuff. Um, unfortunately, Paleo did not appeal to me as much as I wanted it to. I almost got lost in Baldur's Gate 3. Almost. But today is an important video. Because, um, as most of you may know by now, this is now the seventh anniversary of No Man's Sky. Seven years. It's been one hell of a ride. And as with any anniversary, we're getting an update. Titled Echoes. Now, I'm not going to lean hard into what Echoes might mean, because it kind of didn't work with the last update. Um, we were all kind of a little off. Um, but what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to speculate as to exactly where this update is going to leave us. Because this is either going to be the final update, literally the last major update for the game, or it's going to be a small update with another narrative expedition and we get one more update at the end of the year. Which is clouding it really close with the expedition redo that they do every year. So... I want to believe that this is going to be very large. I could be wrong, and I'm probably wrong. I, this may not be that big, given where they're positioning it up against Starfield, up against a couple of releases in October that are very large. Um, so, it probably isn't going to be as in-depth as the list you see behind me, but we're going to go over this a little bit, and I'm going to go for what I wish, if this is the last update this game is ever going to get in terms of large content pushes, I want to go over what I would like to see in it. Um, again, the community has a million different things they want, but I'm going to go into what I think would be the grand finale for No Man's Sky. Horrible thing to have to say sometimes, but we're seven years in. Most games don't last this long. Most games don't have a rejuvenation period and a life that No Man's Sky has had. And the impact that No Man's Sky has had on my life, on the life of a lot of people, and a lot of gamers, is something you can't always put into words. And it's an experience. So, what is Echoes going to be? What do I wish Echoes was? And inevitably what it's not going to be. Um... So we're going to start first. Quality of life. There are still so many annoying things in the game that have never been addressed. So a few things that I'd like to see is inventory sorting. We don't really have inventory sorting. It would be really great to have legitimate inventory sorting. We know they've been working on the code for the inventory. They had to for the Switch. So please, for the love of God... Inventory sorting. Then there's other quality of life things like refiners in multiplayer and leaving star systems and them magically losing all of their content con contents. Um, the numerous issues with multiplayer. Please, for the love of God, can we find a way to get joint saving? on multiplayer. So it's not just the host of the multiplayer sessions whose work and progress is saved. Everybody in the party's work and progress should be saved on their own side, on their client. Which, I mean, most of No Man's Sky's systems operate on a client basis, so why can't that work in multiplayer? Um, the other issues with multiplayer, like, you can't joint build a base. It would be great if it functioned more like our survival game in multiplayer and it allowed us to build bases and cities together. So, yeah. And there's other, you know, irritating bugs that have been in the game since the dawn of time that would be really amazing to get fixed. I could go on a list of ones that irritate me. They don't necessarily break the game, but they are a pain in the ass. So now we get to modular ships, and this one has been in my mind for the longest time because when I saw what the Sentinel ship update functioned like, how we had a large pool of procedural parts on a base structure of a ship, this might be their way of giving us custom ships. 
and I'll explain to you how I believe this. We won't get painting. I don't think we're ever going to get painting for our ships. They don't seem to be interested in doing it for whatever reason, because they think it breaks the procedural search for ships. That's fine. But something that I've been thinking about is they've gone in and technically redone ships and how ships are made with the Sentinel update. So you have a base base, let's say, foundation of your ship, which contains the inventory, the specs, the ship class rating, a brick. And on that brick, they've created points that are procedural that generate parts. So if you notice the procedural Sentinel ships have a set range of parts that can be added in any configuration. Well, think about it. What if they introduce an entire pool of parts that you can either buy or discover or craft that you can then swap out on that brick? Now, this would probably not work with the legacy ships. So you have the option of sticking with your legacy ship or going with the new ship variant. It, it sounds like a lot of work, probably isn't going to happen, but... If this is how they're going to give us custom ships, I would be absolutely fine with it. And definitely open that up to modders, please, for the love of God. And I'll maybe even have the community design parts to in put into the game, into the procedural pool. It would be amazing if they could do that. So then the third thing, and I know this is almost 100% guaranteed, given how they've used Expeditions as a narrative platform for the game. We've been getting a lot of lore in the last two Expeditions, so we're going to get a narrative ending Expedition. This is going to wrap up the entire story of the game. If, if, again, this is the final update, this needs to be voice acted, it needs to have cinematics, it needs to push the boundaries of what the game does in terms of narrative delivery. It needs to really feel like a culmination of everything we've done in the game. Of all the lore and all the story and all the bits and bobs that we've discovered from the ARG, from the lore. It needs to feel like a culmination of all the story all the things that they've been implementing in the game over the last seven years. Or, it could just finish the ARG and not really answer much of anything. I would really like the former than the latter. So then, again, if we're wrapping this up, and there's only so much they're going to do to the game, I would like to see a suite of feature-rich mod tools. Not the way that modders have been having to create their own things to manipulate assets in the game. Give us a fully fleshed out mod suite that allows us to affect AI, that allows us to affect NPC movement and pathing. Give us all the tools that you work with so that the community can screw with them. And I'll get to it later why this would be ultra important. So then, of course, living freighters. We've had living ships for the dawn of time. Living freighters could... Uh, I've brought this up a million times, the concept of growing your living ship in your freighter instead of having to do that horrendous 24-hour time-gated quest, which, granted, you only have to do once, but it was never fun. It would be more cool to have to procure the living ship egg and gestate it in your living freighter and depending on the class of your freighter it translates traits to those ships it would be so awesome and it's a new type of freighter so then prefab base parts i seriously loved the revamp that they did to all of the parts for the freighter base building it made it so much more in depth and, and, and unified in terms of a visual style. I'd love this 
for, for planet-side bases. Now, granted, we have a plethora of parts and decorations, but for people who don't want to get balls deep into base building, oh, those modular pieces from the freighters would be an amazing transition to planets. Really, for people who aren't adept at base building, who just want to plunk down a house on a planet, it would be a great thing to introduce. So then, we get to procedurally generated planet dungeons. Functioning similar to the procedural freighters that you would go through and, and defeat enemies and get loot. Please, we could do those planet side and they could be great. They could be different levels deep into the ground. Um, they could introduce new types of enemies. Um, you could have NPC enemies, so you could be fighting Gek and Korvac and stuff. It would be so cool. So cool. And introduce new loot. Maybe that's where you could put the ship parts for the modular ships. Or an entirely new class of um, cosmetics. Or ship paints. Or, or There's so many things they could do with the loot tables. With procedural dungeons on planets. It could be so awesome. Um... Um, yeah, so, I mean, that, that would be beyond awesome, because there's still not enough to do on planets. Planets, there's not an allure to go down on planets as much as there used to be. I will say that. So then, the number one, number one most important thing, we have the fabric tech in the game. Please, for the love of God, we need a revamp of water. I want deeper oceans. I want... Waterfalls, rivers, waterways, water that actually functions like water. So you can create swimming pools or oceans or lakes of your own. Um, I don't want this to be those horrible stagnant things like the, the volcanoes, which aren't the best way of doing volcanoes in the game. They're just a static asset with an animation for eruption. I, I don't want waterfalls to be like that. Absolutely not. Or rivers. I, I want it to be something meaningful that generates. It could be a new planet type. It could only show up on, let's say, um, paradise planets. Something cool, unique, that you're not going to find in every damn star system. I mean, the idea of finding a ring planet in just about every star system made them boring really fast. So then, and we know that something regarding this is coming. For the love of God. Station ownership. It needs to be that that may be tied to a guild system where you have a guild space station. And this could flesh out the idea of a player economy where you craft stuff and you sell it at your space station. Maybe creating a, a hunt for rare materials and things that you only sell at your space station that don't show up in the general loot pool would be so cool. And this could also be tied into um, the settlements. Maybe give us um, a more fleshed out settlement system. So not only do we have what we have now, but an actual trade system between your space station and settlements on planets would be so cool. And it doesn't have to be overly complicated. All it has to do is generate a system economy where you place, you know, orders or, or um, you, as, as your as your pool of resources at your space station vacate, they're supplemented by things that are crafted by the NPCs at your settlement, um, the planets that have unique resources, the NPCs there go farm them and ship them up to your space uh, station. It could be very simple. It doesn't have to be, you know, pie in the sky Eve levels of economy. It could be very rudimentary and still be really cool. And then we're going to get to my last thing. And this ties into the mod tools. Um, if this is the last hurrah for No Man's Sky, if this is where we're going to start heading into maintenance mode the way most games do as they age, and I know it's sad to say this, but if we're going into this tail end of development, as they work on their new IP and get it ready for a debut. Dedicated servers. Atlas, for all its flaws, 
the dedicated server system that they set up was cool because let's 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 describe it this way um you host a galax uh, a star system not a galaxy a single star system that you set the parameters in so how many you know paradise planets how what types of resources what types of creatures um the type of space station um whether or not it generates um fleets whether it even has a space base at star base at all all the parameters are on your end for your server and you have a unique share code to where all of the people who host servers can visit each other's star systems basically creating your own player galaxy it's not hard tech to do atlas did it it worked flawlessly on survival servers um i'm not sure if it works the same way on other services that hosted um, Atlas servers, but it's not super hard to do. And if you give all the tools to the players, you're not going to be spending a year, you know, bug fixing it and, and, and ironing it out. If it's rudimentary and it works, the players will go balls to the walls with it, especially if you give us the feature rich mod tools. Now that I got that list out of the way, this is a personal message to Sean Murray. The last seven years have been fucking amazing. This game probably saved me from leaving gaming completely. A after spending years in EverQuest, um, years in ARK, um, kind of burning out on the MMO genre, and... and I wouldn't say aging out of gaming, but getting to that point where things felt stale, that, you know, the fantasy genre wasn't always a big appeal to me. No Man's Sky gave me that rich sci-fi universe that I craved for. And there is no other game like No Man's Sky for all of its detractors, all of its flaws and its successes. No Man's Sky is unique. There will never be another No Man's Sky. And I thank the team at Hello Games for all of their dedication over the years, for being amazing with the player base, and for helping us form a community of modders and gamers that is unlike any other on the internet. Because for every toxic community that's out there, this community has done amazing things. And I hate getting sentimental like this, but... There's no way to describe as you age as a gamer how important sometimes having that community is when you can't relate to the age of gamers coming up. I'm in my 40s. <laughs> and, and as stupid as it sounds, I don't relate to 18-year-olds the way I used to. And having an adult community that loves sci-fi, that loves science fiction, that loves game development, that loves every aspect of science fiction and science fact... This has been great. And I won't lie, I am looking forward immensely to Starfield. Bethesda is going to take the No Man's Sky formula and put it on steroids, even if it doesn't have multiplayer. And we should all celebrate this. I know there, there's been some really weird communication, most notably on the Steam forums, between players and, and, and this pissing war. Um, we should be happy that we are seeing a renaissance of sci-fi games. Star Trek Resurgence, The Expanse, Starfield, Spaceborne 2. We're, we're slowly getting back into a renaissance of space games, and we need some aces in the hole that actually start getting the, the communities... The, the gaming community in general, more inspired for sci-fi based games again. And it's taking the feet of other developers and holding them to the fire. Starfield's not only going to maybe push Hello Games to do better and, and bigger things, but for the love of God, maybe they're finally going to get Cloud Empyrean games off their asses to actually do more, produce more. Give us more, because more sci-fi games are fucking awesome. So again, um, to all the viewers, 
to Sean Murray, Hello Games, all of the content creators out there like Captain Steve, Beeblebum, too many to note, all the friends that I have made over the last seven years via the Reddit, via the Steam forums, amazing people with hope and inspiration and insight and knowledge. Some of the best people you'll ever talk to. Even if you don't get to ever meet them face to face. Just amazing people. Thank you again. Thank you so much for the last seven years. Who knows, we may be getting more. But if this is the swan song this year, I'm going to be damn happy. And I really do hope I see everybody enjoying Starfield. God forbid enjoying Star Citizen and any other sci-fi game that we get. I, I've got chapters of The Expanse to start working on. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing. And if you have any input for what you're seeing behind me, don't hesitate to make a comment and I'll check it out. Thanks again, everybody.